Russian contact, pre-contact, uh, estimates of population size anywhere from between 15,000 and 20,000. Post-Russian contact was reduced to fewer than 2,000 individuals. So major depopulation associated with Russian contact, diseases, tuberculosis, the usual uh, infectious diseases. So smallpox, TB, measles, influenza, and warfare. Also, the Aleuts were forcibly relocated to the commander islands, uh, Myrne and Bering, and to the Pribilov Islands, St. Paul and St. George. Uh, there were rookeries there, uh, so the Russians who were in, really in the Russian American company that was into furs, furs were very uh, seal furs, particularly were very fashionable in Europe, and so they basically relocated groups of uh, Aleuts to hunt uh, for furs in these islands. And it had all sorts of genetic implications, as you'll see in just a minute. Sampling uh, of the Aleutian Islands uh, from 1999 to 2007, we sampled 11 populations, Akutan, Atka, Bering, False Pass, King Cove, Nelson Lagoon, Sandpoint, St. George, St. Paul's, Umnak, and Unalaska. We sampled all, every single inhabited island uh, that Aleuts lived, and so uh, uh, that, but on the other hand, there are many, many islands now that are not inhabited by uh, people at all. Plus we also, oops, okay, where am I, okay. Plus we also uh, 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 studied some of the Aleut, the Aleut community in Anchorage, plus in Kamchatka, and for control uh, reasons we also sampled Uvims, Koryaks, and Itilimin on, uh, 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 in Kamchatka. And these samples included all of the islands concurrently uh, inhabited. OK, now, as far as the DNA, the mitochondrial DNA, is concerned, the autogenous uh, American lineages are A2, B2, C1, D1, and X2A. Uh, Aleuts only have the A2 and D2. So out of all the founding uh, uh, haplogroups and subtypes, only A2 and D2 lineages are located. Uh, Eskimo Aleuts and Nadine have A2, A1. Uh, Aleuts have a diagnostic uh, haplogroup, uh, which nobody else has. Uh, I guess uh, uh, Sakwak Man in uh, Greenland has that one, and I'll talk about the, the importance of that in just a minute. So Bering Island Aleuts only have D2, A1A. Uh, A2 was lost, and in, on Bering Island, uh, uh, D is fixed, and uh, due to founder effect, and A2 was lost. Okay. So if you look at the uh, Arctic haplogroups in terms of mitochondria, you see that the general Asian one is A4, and single mutation difference uh, to A2, which uh, Native Americans, Nadine, Eskimo Aleuts, Chukchi have, and you trace back to A3, which Nadine and uh, Esco Aleuts have, and then the very specific A7, which is A2, A1, A, which is Aleut. And they also have D, and the D, uh, the Asian D is D4, and you trace that to the uh, Eskimo uh, and Aleut populations, you, they have D2 present. And this summarizes the, uh, our sampling of the region. Uh, 10 years of work, basically. And uh, you see the Kamchatkan population, the Itilmen, the Koryaks, the Ibins, have very, very different haplogroups than do the Aleuts. The Aleuts, there's a nice gradation that goes uh, uh, from east to west. Uh, they have A and D, but they don't have uh, C or any of the other ones. So you see a very nice migration pattern reflected in the mitochondrial DNA. And one can do median network joining, uh, network analysis, and there uh, you trace back to the, to the original 
migrant uh, mitochondria from out of Africa, and you can trace the uh, exact mutations uh, through the Aleuts, and the Aleuts have a number of very distinctive mitochondrial DNA haplogroups. Also, one can look at neighbor joining tree, and what you see there is that so the uh, Alaskan uh, Yupik are quite different, and Athabascans, and then the Aleuts pretty well uh, form this branch, and the Siberian populations, the Koryak, Elamin, are very, very different from any of the uh, uh, Alaskan or Aleut populations. Oops. Now, one of the interesting things that we found is that if you take the mitochondrial DNA sequences and you compute distances, intermatch distances between all the populations, uh, the 11 island populations, you get a very, very close relationship between geography and genetics. Okay. And the correlation is 0.72, which is sort of unheard of, between geography and genetics. And the uh, p-value is highly significant. And so what, one of the things we observed is that the mitochondrial DNA, which is passed on along the maternal lineage, the genetic structure was preserved, even with uh, Japanese invasion, uh, gene flow with the Russians, gene flow with the English, Scandinavian uh, fishermen uh, in, in the Eastern Islands. But the maternal lineage preserved the <clears throat> actual genetic pattern reflecting the migrations, the movement of people uh, from, the, from the East to the West. And so this is preserved very nicely in the uh, um, female, the maternal lineage, as far as the, uh, the mitochondrial DNA is concerned. And you can also play games with this. You can take a look at and create a three-dimensional surface uh, using residuals of genetic distances, regressed on geographical distances, and how you read this, that's a good question, but basically uh, peaks above uh, the surface denote genetic uh, discontinuity, peaks below uh, denote extreme uh, similarity. So what you're doing is you're taking geography and you're uh, 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 regressing that against uh, the genetic distances, and there's a very strong relationship again. Okay. Now, Herlichka in 1945 proposed, this is after he had gone out and basically robbed all the graves and, and the, the caves in the Aleutian Islands and brought them back to the Smithsonian. He proposed on the basis of cranial morphology, uh, Brachycephaly versus dolichocephaly, broad heads versus narrow heads, that paleo Aleuts were replaced by Aleuts about a thousand years ago. Okay. Now, remember, in those days, back in the 40s, 50s, the theory was that there was a process of brachycephalization that went along with hominization. As we became more uh, modern Homo sapiens, we got round heads. Uh, probably just big heads, but anyway, that's another story. <laughs> so Laughlin and Marsh in 51 disagreed with this replacement theory, and they suggested that maybe the, the change in uh, cranial morphology was sort of in situ evolutionary change. And so if you look at uh, the mitochondrial DNA, and uh, this project, Dennis O'Rourke and his group did the uh, ancient DNA, we did the living populations, the contemporary DNA. And if you look at um, mm -hmm. skeletal materials, and this is 79 skeletal remains from prehistoric eastern Aleutian Islands, uh, they were C14 dated pre-1000 versus post-1000, oops, should be another zero, and tested for mitochondrial DNA haplogroups. And if you look at pre your uh, a, again, they only have A and D haplogroups, uh, and there is some difference between these, but it's not really statistically significant. Now, interpretation, the initial study based on smaller samples suggests that there was no replacement. However, a study, again, by the O'Rourke group, Smith et al., using larger samples, found statistically significant differences between the pre-1000 and post-1000 uh, years. So the larger sample was able to document some change, 
And if you look at the using uh, the hypervariable region one sequences, uh, you find that uh, there is, for example, the presence of not only A and D haplogroups, but actually B is present on Brook River. And uh, contemporary Aleut populations don't have haplogroup B. Okay. And so apparently, and what, what you see is actually this greater variation, greater diversity early on than now, as far as the mitochondria are concerned. And so in terms of uh, diversity, there is a slightly significantly higher uh, diversity in ancient populations based on DNA than compared to the modern populations. Another uh, analysis has to do with spatial autocorrelation uh, using aleut to mitochondrial DNA diversity. And you find, as no, no surprise, a linear relationship between geography, genetics, uh, the one surprise is that uh, if you have an isolation by distance model, the greater the distance, uh, the greater the genetic variation, you'd expect a positive correlation. Here you actually have a negative correlation, which actually reflects the kin structured migration pattern. So we can also say that the Aleuts uh, underwent fission, migrated, uh, mainly families migrated. Okay, and again, this would exacerbate populational differences over time. And analysis, the other question we wanted to find out is, uh, are there particular barriers or is there discont genetic discontinuity among the Aleuts at all? And one way is this Samova uh, uh, analysis. And it identifies genetic barriers between inferred groups. And so end populations partition into uh, K groups with genetic barriers between them. Uh, and what you see is there are a number of distinct barriers indicated by the Samova analysis. And probably the most pronounced being with the Siberian groups and then the Alaskan mainland. No, no big surprise on that. And one can also use the Monlonier algorithm, uh, the triangulation method, to look for uh, barriers. And the most significant barrier, again, is Alaska, Alaskan Eskimos, Alaskan populations from the Aleuts, and then also the Siberian Kamchatkan populations from the Aleuts. And there's interesting, a central Aleut uh, barrier which appears to be reflecting, when they first migrated, they got up to about here, uh, then 6,000 years ago, the uh, climate changed. So when they paused, there was some differentiation, and then through kin migration, families left, and so uh, this group is quite different from the, the remaining. One of the interesting things had to do also with the Y chromosome markers, and the Y chromosome, uh, unlike the mitochondrial DNA, where the maternal lineage preserved the genetic structure of Aleut populations and reflected the geographic distribution, uh, with Y chromosome markers, one of the striking aspects is only 15% of the Y chromosomes were of Aleut origin, which means 85% of the Y chromosomes are either Russian, English, or Scandinavian. Uh, and so your uh, Q, Q3 are native uh, Y chromosomes, and then H, I, et cetera, are uh, R1A, R1B are your uh, European haplogroups. And so by forcing the males to go on the hunting for seals on these various islands away from the females, uh, the Russians had a you know, a lot of gene flow. And when I was on, uh, on Bering Island, I came across uh, a letter from the governor actually recommending gene flow or recommending mating with Aleut women to, you know, help the population along. So there was a defined program that the Russian government was instituting of uh, gene flow, if you wish, mating with, with Russians 
This was not a chance thing, uh, but was actually voiced by the governor. 